Hi, welcome to Performance Plus Tennis. You know, I really enjoy evaluating instruction from other coaches, and I, I love supporting coaches that, that really provide great information. And I also enjoy evaluating some of the ideas and concepts that I tend to disagree with or think that maybe there's a better way. And in today's video, what I'd like to do is discuss the idea of whether you want to have a straight arm on a backhand volley or a straight arm on a backhand slice. Recently, I saw a video where the coach was instructing the players to really have a straight arm, and the principal idea was that you'd have more leverage from the shoulder if your arm was straight. And uh, that kind of struck me a little bit because I actually don't think that that's really the way it works. I, I think that what the coach was trying to say is that if you hold the arm straight, there's only one way you can move the swing, and that is from the shoulder. But I, I don't think you have more leverage from here than you would if you're in closer. I understand that coaches also want to have that arm straight because they fear if the student just uses the lower arm that they'll hyperextend their elbow into an injury and then it's over. They got an injury and then tennis gets frustrating and they're just using their lower arm. So the key element is really to get a, a shoulder engaged right from the beginning so that you can move the shoulder when you play the shot. Okay, so for example, on a slice backhand ground stroke, when I prepare, I'm going to make a strong coil with the shoulder, and I'm also going to have a flex in the elbow. Now, I'm not going to play the shot with the same degree of flex because that would be awkward and uncomfortable. Work wouldn't be very powerful. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go from a flex position, and as my shoulder moves, my lower arm is going to move and catch up with it, and then they're going to move through together. So there isn't any kind of snapping effect that would cause a hyperextension of the elbow. But I couldn't go back like this and feel like I have leverage or power. Because we know that if we're going to, you know, for example, pick up a heavy object, we're not going to pick up that object away from us because we actually have less leverage or strength than if it's close to us. So the same holds true with a slice backhand. I'm going to keep the hands fairly close to me here to start with this flex, and then the shoulder's going to go out, and then the lower arm is going to catch up, and the two are going to go through together. And that is how you get a nice, natural, fluid slice backhand, okay? So there are, have been pros. There have been pros. Uh, in the past, I can think of one or two that have really played the backhand slice with a straight arm from the beginning, but I wouldn't uh, consider those slice backhands some of the best in history. So, and the same holds true on the backhand volley. When you go to play a backhand volley, first thing you do is lock up the arm straight. You have very little versatility in terms of adapting to the ball and really aren't in a position of a lot of strength. So when you prepare to play a backhand volley, the flex I have in my arm right here in the ready position is the flex I'm actually going to go into the volley with. So the movement is from the shoulder, but this really hasn't moved much from the elbow. The angle hasn't really changed much. So I go here, and I've got the flex right here in front of me, and I just go out and play the volley. Move that. Okay. So the movement is from the shoulder, yes, and there is a little movement in the elbow. But I think it makes sense that we do not want to have a locked joint. Okay. And, and final thought on that, and I think this makes a lot of sense to you, is quite simply asking the question, are joints protected when they're straight or when they're flexed? And as an example, if you were to go stand on a bench on the tennis court and you were to jump off that bench and land on the court with your knees straight, would that be good or would that be bad? You'd feel the jar from your hips to your knees, to your ankles, everything would be taking that jar. So the big takeaway from today is don't worry about starting this movement on the backhand side with a straight arm because it actually puts more strain on the shoulder than if you're close. And then learn how to move the shoulder and let the elbow comfortably and naturally catch up through the shot so that you get a nice natural movement that is effective and works. Okay? I welcome your feedback. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not already, and we will continue to address myths and ideas and present you with solutions in our future videos. Thanks so much.